Hi, and welcome back. I've seen a fair bit of discussion about EQ cramping recently, partly in response to my BX console Amec review, in which, spoiler alert, I discovered that the high midband cramps, even though the high band doesn't. And partly due to a recent White Sea Studio video about the SSL EQ plugin, under which every other comment seems to be recommending my re-EQ video. So I thought this might be a good time to make a short video just about cramping, what it is, and perhaps how it's commonly corrected, so you don't have to watch an hour-long review of an unrelated plugin. Okay, here's a 10k boost in Pro-Q3. Notice how nice and symmetrical it looks. That's how it's supposed to look. Okay, now here's re-EQ, also doing 9 dB of boost at 10k and I've tweaked the bandwidth to match the width of the bell as best I can. But notice that I can only get anywhere near close to matching the lower half of the bell. I can get that pretty close, but I can't match the upper half at all, because regardless of the bandwidth setting, re-EQ always plunges down to unity at Nyquist. That gives us an asymmetric bell shape, and also significantly less of the airy frequencies between 10 and 20k. This is cramping, and it's a consequence of using the bilinear transform to derive the digital version of an analog filter. Or to put that another way, it's a problem with the basic underlying maths that underpins digital filters, rather than any specific implementation. All analog style digital filters will do this unless you take steps to correct it. There's more than one way to fix this problem. You could use a higher sample rate for your project, or the EQ plugin could oversample internally. This will move the Nyquist limit higher and significantly reduce the cramping. If I switch the analyzer sample rate to 192 kilohertz, the curves match much better, at least once I've adjusted re-EQ again. But oversampling is a bit of a brute force approach with several potential downsides, including latency and higher CPU use. Is there a simpler way? Let's turn off this band in re-EQ and replace it with this one. It's exactly the same, but with less gain to compensate for the fact that I'm about to add a high shelf. And suddenly the two curves look a lot more alike. If I switch to show the phase response, it's also very similar. Now granted, they're not identical, but there are a lot of variables to tweak. The frequency of the high shelf, the way the gain is split between the two bands, the bandwidth. I can't be bothered to try to tweak all those to perfection, if I'm honest. But it wouldn't surprise me if, given enough time and patience, I succeeded in nulling these two bands of re-EQ against a single band of Pro-Q3 in zero latency mode. Now, that will all change if I switch to natural phase mode. Because natural phase mode fixes the phase response in the high end. Pro-Q3 now gives us a nice symmetrical phase response as well, at least until we get comfortably above 20 kHz, where it inevitably has to return to zero, because reasons. Whereas re-EQ's phase response is shifted upwards. If we turn off Pro-Q3, we can see that at 10k, the frequency we're actually targeting, this should be at zero phase, but it isn't. It's shifted upwards slightly because of the corrective high shelf we added. And sure enough, the same thing happens with Pro-Q3 in zero latency mode. 10K is no longer at zero phase, and this is what gets corrected in natural phase mode. And in fact, that's the only practical difference in natural phase mode. I see a lot of confusion about this online. No, it isn't a halfway house between zero latency and linear phase. At least not in any practical sense we need to consider as mix engineers. Natural phase mode is minimum phase, analog style EQ, just like zero latency mode, and will behave the same way as zero latency mode in every way, except that phase response in the high frequencies. Okay, that's enough for today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>